Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayana Namaskritya Narayana Arancheva Narutama Devin Saraswati Vyasa Tatsu Jaya Mudhirai Nasta Praise Abhadisu Nityam Bhagavata Seva Bhagavati Uttama Sloka Bhakti Bhavaiti Naistiki So, welcome to this morning program, Srimad uh, Bhagavatam class here in Vrindavan, uh, Krishna Bharam Mandya. <coughs> so, this chapter is titled, Lord Vamanadev, the Draft Incarnation. This is Srimad Bhagavatam Kanto 8, chapter 18. 8, 18. Today's text is, is it 13 to? 13 to 20. Okay. So, we read this text together. Tam vatum vamanam dristwa Modamana mahasaya Karmani karayam asu Puras kritya prajapati Tam him vatum the brahmachari vamanam dwav distwa sin modana manaha in a happy mood maharishaya the great saintly persons karmani Ritualistic ceremonies. Karanyamasu performed. Puras Kritya keeping in front. Prajapatim Kashyapamuni the Prajapati. So translation When the great sages saw the Lord as the Brahmachari Dwarf, Vamana, they were certainly very pleased. Thus, the place before them, Kashyapamuni, the Pajapati, and perform all the ritualistic ceremonies such as the birthday ceremony. Please kindly respond to the When the great sages saw the Lord as the Brahman, Brahmachari Dwarf, Vamana, they were certainly very pleased. Yes, very pleased. Thus, the place before them, Kashyapa Muni, the Prajapati, and performed all the ritualistic ceremonies, such as the birthday ceremony. Uh, according to Vedic civilization, when a child is born, in the family of a Brahmana, the birthday ceremony known as Jata Karma is first performed, and then other ceremonies are also gradually performed. But 
When this Vamana Rupa appeared in the form of a Vatu or a Brahmachari, his sacred trade ceremony was also performed immediately. So, text 14. Tashyopani Yamanasya Savritim Savita Bravit Brihaspati Brahma Sutram Mekalam Kashapodadat. Translation. Um, at the sacred trade ceremony, Vaman, at the sacred trade ceremony of Vaman Dev, the Sun God personally uttered the Gayatri Mantra. Brihaspati offered the sacred tray, and Kashyapamuni offered a straw belt. 15. Dada Krishna Jina Bhumi Dandan Soma Vanaspati Kopi Nacha Dana Kopi Nacha Dana Mata Drills Chatram Jagat Pati Mother Af gave him a dear skin, and the demigod of the moon, who is the king of the forest, gave him a Brahma Danda, the rod of a Brahmachari. His mother, Aditi, gave him cloth for underwear, and the deity presiding over the heavenly kingdom offered him an umbrella. Kamandalum Veda Garba Kusham Sapta Sayodadu Akshamalam Maharaja Saraswatya Vya Yatmanaha O King, Lord Brahma offered a water pot to the inexhaustible Supreme Personality of Godhead. The seven sages offered him Kusa grass. And Mother Saraswati gave him a string of Rudraksha bead. Tasmi Tupani Taya Yaksharat Patrikam Madat Biksham Bhagavati Sakshat O Madat Ambikasati. When Vamana Dev had thus been given the sacred thread, Kuvera, king of the Yakshas, gave him a pot for begging arms. And Mother Bhagavati, the wife of Lord Shiva, and most chaste mother of the entire universe, gave him his false arms. Sabrama Vachasenevam Sabham Sabhavitam Vatu Brahma Shi Ganasan Justam Atyaru Chatamarishaha. Having thus been welcomed by everyone, Lord Vamana Dev, the best of the Brahmacharis, exhibited his Brahman effulgence. Thus, he surpassed in beauty that entire assembly, which was filled with great sinly. Brahmanas. 19. Samidam, at, um, samidam Ahitam Vanim Kritwa Parisamudanam Paristiriya Sama Biachya <coughs> Samadhi Ajuhod Vijaha. After Lord Vamanadev said, a sacrificial fire. After Lord Sri Vamana Dev set a sacrificial fire, he offered worship and performed a fire sacrifice on the sacrificial field. Sutwa Sutwas Vameda Yajamanam Ujitam Balim Balim Brigunam Upakal Pitestata. Jagam Tatakila Sara Sambrito Barinagam Sana Mayam Pade Pade. 
When the Lord heard that Bali Maharaj was performing also made the sacrifices under the patronage of Brahmanas belonging to the Brigu dynasty, the Supreme Lord, who is full in every respect, proceeded there to show his mercy to Bali Maharaj. By his weight, he pushed down the earth with every step. So, Papat, Isaac by Grace, is confound the child. Shall I ask back to the down to Swami Papat? The Supreme Personality of God that is Akila Sara Sambrita. In other words, he is the proprietor of everything, is, everything essential in this material world. Thus, although the Lord was going to Bali Maharaj to beg something, he is always complete and has nothing to beg from anyone. Indeed, he is so powerful that in his full opulence, he pressed down the surface of the earth at every step. Om Gyanan Timiranda Sya, Gyanan Janan Salakaya, Saksu Run Meditam, Jainatis Mai, Si Guru Bhena, Sichetan Yamanovistam, Stafitam Yenabhuti. Swayam Rupam Kadamayam Dadati Swa Padantika Panchakalpatari Vicha Kripa Sundubya Evacha Patitana Bhava Vya Vaishnavi Vya Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutari Sinimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Vitana Namaste Saras Satadeva Gauravani Picharne Nenda Sesa Sunyavadi Prasati Adhisattva Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Si Advaita Gadara Si Vasari Zagor Bhakti Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So This is an interesting chapter The entire chapter is very interesting In the sense that is the entire chapter is basically talking about two basic fundamental things that, re, that is very much all pervasive in, in the social structure as well as the spiritual systems. And what are those two, those, two, those two things? Basically are charity. Of course, the Lord had appeared as Vaman Dev, but what was his motive? To resolve a conflict. So two things. Conflict resolutions and charity. The Lord appears here again and again. Even on this planet. And his, uh, his idea is that he comes to be able to rectify situations. Especially when there is so much of Suppression by the by the demons, and so here, Bali Maharaj, you know the story. He was so powerful because he just come from the lineage of Pralan Maharaj, so he was empowered. But someone could be empowered also in a very negative way. But the demon could be empowered. So he was able to uh, conquer the battle with the demigods, took over all of the assets, their boots. This is what happened in wars. So when everything has been taken from them, from the demigods, they petitioned the Lord for assistance. This is the difference between a devotee or a demigod and a non-devotee. A devotee may also be in problem. The demigods, they are aligned with the Supreme Lord, so they also do face challenges. But when they do face challenges, they resort to solicit for assistance from the Lord. The non-devotees, when they have challenges, they resort, they align with their minds and their sensory modalities to take some instruction from them. 
And in most cases, it brings about, you know, catastrophe, more trouble. So here, the Lord appeared as Vamanadev. He has appeared as Vamanadev to, to actually execute uh, a mission to relieve the demons, to relieve Balaam from his boots, <laughs> to relieve him from his boots, and then give it back to the people who actually own it. So, but then these preliminary chapters, we're hearing, especially in these verses, we're hearing about his appearance when Vamanadev appeared. How practically every, war, every meaningful person was involved in appreciating his presence. We call it bed day. Bed day. So even in the Vedic literature, they celebrate bed day. Are we celebrating bed days of our devotees? Yes? Celebrate bed days of your brahmacharis here? <laughs> so, these are significant factors in our own culture, in our own Vedic culture. The bad days are celebrated. So when Vaman appeared, normally you have to, you have to, there are some rituals, some formalities you have to execute or have to wait to be able to uh, meet up with scheduled bad days when a child is born. But this is the Supreme Personality of God that is beyond you know, this scheduling system. So it was done. Almost immediately. But then the result was that. What to take home about this is that every, everybody, every meaningful person around was showing their responsibility and their social capital. There are two things, social responsibility and social capital. You may, you may wonder, what is this guy talking about? Is it, is it there in our sastras? Yes, Rupa Goswami talks about social, social capital in his Uparisamrita. He didn't use the word social capital, but in modern terms, the terminology in the social sciences, the management sciences is social capital. He talks about inter, interrelational connectedness. If you don't have a relationship with the family, how are you going to go there for the birthday, for the birthday ceremony of your child? You will not go there. They may not even invite you. So, the people who were around, they were connected with Kashyap and Muni. And so they came around. Bhagavati herself gave some charity. Proper mentions, uh, in, I mean, in the text is mentioned, the Bhagwati is the, is the base of chaste ladies, chastity. Again, is, you know, is advocated. So what is the use of being chaste in the 21st century? Any, any need? Is there any need to be chaste in the 21st century? This is a globalized information culture whereby, you know, there are so many platforms where you can socialize and do whatever you like. So what's the need of being chaste? There's a need of being chaste because chastity invokes some type of protection and power. Some people who are chaste, they could even stop the sun from rising. you find that also in the very literature. So, Bhagavati herself gave arms. So the next time when in a community someone gives birth to a child, you should initiate a ceremony to welcome that child. If even the parents, they become too detached. So the birthday ceremonies are celebrated in the very culture. And therefore we have to see that we don't neglect this social function or this type of social responsibility of members of our society to children when their birthday comes by. 
And when we do go to those birthday ceremonies, we should, we should follow the example of these great personalities who gave charity, who gave arms to Vamanadev. Yes, when was the last time you gave, you gave arms to somebody? Or we just feel, well, I give my whole life to Krishna. So, I, I, don't, need to, I don't need to do anything else to anybody. <laughs> this child is for, is for is, no, this is the responsibility of the parents. What's, what's my business in that? I'm trying to be detached. Yeah, but, you know, we also have to see how we are motivating our devotees within a spiritual setting which is which which has a social a social function as a subsumation because our social reality is also subsumed in our spiritual reality and therefore some of our family some of our devotees they give birth to children and who knows if they perform the gather them some scholars and all the some scholars nicely they could invoke very powerful souls to come and save humanity and therefore we see this text is about a social function and even they are recognizing that social function in relationship to the Lord why couldn't they just say well Vamana, oh he is the supreme president of God there's no need to give him charity in fact, I was already doing some comments of Prabhupada regarding charity. So Prabhupada mentioned, he was mentioning that, you know, it's very common in India that if someone wants to perform some charity, some people, so they say, for instance, they have cows. And a cow that maybe has a broken leg or the cow is not so healthy, then they give that out for charity. But that is not charity in the mode of goodness. Again, Prabhupada delineates the different types of charities. Krishna himself mentioned that in the Gita. There is a sattvic, sattvic charity, there is rajasic charity, and there is a tamasic charity. Tamasic charity means indiscriminately. You go out, and then you don't know any, you don't know why the person, you know the status of the person, they just beg in some money, maybe they, they're drug addicts. Now you find this very much common in common. Uh, in Western countries, people the drug addicts, and you know they are, they don't have any money to buy more drugs, so they just go by the road and then they bag it. And so you could say, well, I'm very charitably disposed. The sasa says we have to be charitable, so take some money. But he goes to use it for drugs. So Prabhupada says you can give the money to the person, but then he goes to use it for, you know, taking intoxications, or he could use it for uh, going to the brutal. So that is. It is criminal charity, Tamas. And I know of a course when I was uh, preaching in Africa, uh, we are going for some preaching program, and there was this beggar on the road, on the crossroad. He was, he has an amputated legs. He was just lying on, on his belly. And he was begging. But at the same time, he was, people were throwing him money, but he was on his right hand. What, guess what he, was, what he was holding? He was holding a bottle of beer. On his left hand, he was holding a cigarette. <laughs> and people were giving him charity. So this is not the type of charity that is recommended. Charity should be given for, to the proper person for a rightful purpose. And again, in some uh, proper mention, charity should be given to the brahmanas or the sannyasis. Why? Because those monies should be invested directly in the service of the Lord. Otherwise, it, be, it binds the living entity into this material world. And so, the mood of the devotee is not just to collect. They are also there to support each other. Support people who are less privileged, but not just indiscriminately giving charity, because we don't know what people do with the resources they receive from the charity. And that is why we have uh, functions, other functions of social, social responsibility like, you know, 
a food for life distribution, a food distribution in form of food for life. So the prasadam is, is given to the people. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't use it to harm yourself. You can take the prasadam to a brutal for an exchange for any other social function. And so the wise, they give charity to the right person for the right purpose. And therefore, those who are intelligent, they are, they are, their charitable disposition is geared towards uh, satric disposition. They perform the charity in a, charity in a mode of goodness so that it doesn't get them entangled, so that it purifies their consciousness, it elevates their consciousness. And so, we have to understand that this world is full of conflicts. There are wars. Before we are born, wars we, wars we are going on on this planet. And we cannot stop wars. We can only, if we can Im impact on minimizing wars, we can stop it. There will always be wars between the demons and the demigods. And that's what happened in the case of Bali. See, he conquered the demigods, seized all the assets. And so the demigods, they became bereft of all of the facilities. And so Vamana has a come with a strategy, a strategy to be able to peacefully resolve the conflict in favor of the demigods. We find that even in the case of Mohini Moti, she came with, with that, you know, Krishna appeared in that form, just to, I mean, it's a similar case with Vamanadi, just to come and you know, zap the attention of the, dem, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the demons who are addicted to sex and money. So they get, they get captured. And then everything that she says, then they say, yes, 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 we agree, we agree, yes. Do it. So here Vamana comes, and because... Bali is a very charitable king. And then the whole idea was that because Bali is very charitable, he wouldn't say no to giving charity. Rather, when Vamana went there, and we hear this story in, in the future verses, when Vamana appeared at the sacrificial arena, Bali, everybody was very pleased. There's also one who wonder that they're demons. How are they pleased to see the Lord? They're demons. But there are, there are demons with a difference. No one is completely a demon. No one is 100% demoniac. You know, it's very difficult to for us to find people who are even supposedly uh, good people who are 100% good. So Bali had that high charitable disposition. And in fact, when he came, I mean, yeah, I went, Vamana, because, and then when Vamana came, they were all very happy, the priest, uh, the Brahmins were there, they were all very happy with him. And so, Bali offered to give him whatever he wanted. And in fact, it is explained in the, ver in, 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 in the verse here, how each step, each time, this draft Brahmana, Vamana, each step, his, uh, each time he, he put his step, he sings the act. So people around, they already know, it's not, not, not a draft Brahmana. And those who have the vision, they knew this is the Supreme Person of God. And therefore, when even he went to the sacrificial arena, his effulgence eclipses all everyone else. So they could recognize that he is an exceptional personality. And Bali, we, we hear further how Bali consulted him with his, with his guru about a decision. But then his guru was counterproductive to Bali giving charity to, to this brave Brahmana because his guru told him, that is the supreme person of God. Don't give him even a pin. You try anything, he will take everything from you. 
So he taught where? Sometimes we receive instructions from parents. I remember one of my friends, proper disciples, he told me a story. In New Jersey, how when he was a kid, his father told him, hmm, you know, my dear boy, when you go to the mall, if nobody is watching you, you can pick something. There's nothing wrong with picking something. Ex ex as long as you, you don't get caught. But he thought, as a child, preteen, he thought, no, this is not proper. He said he won't do it. So sometimes we receive instructions, uh, but if the instruction is counterproductive to the scriptures, to the Guru, Sadhu, and Sastra, we receive instruction from our mentors, from our counselors, or whatever. But if the instruction is counterproductive to, Guru, to the Guru, Sadhu, and Sastra, check and balance system, uh, we may not make a quarry. We may just say, oh, I'll do it. But we don't do it. So the same thing. Bali, uh, Bali, although his spiritual master instructed him not to give chai to Vamanadev, because that Vamanadev will take everything from him. He went ahead to give everything anyway. So, the activities of Bali are recognized in the true world. And that is why he is also one of the Mahajans. Mahajans are highly evolved personalities that we look up to as exemplars. And therefore, we have to understand that. Yes, he had conquered the demigods, took all of their uh, the assets, but he was very highly charitably disposed to the Supreme Person of God uh, who appeared as Vama. And this is how Bali offered to give Vamana charity, and Vamana took everything from him. And this is how he was able to tactfully, the word there is tact. We, even as preachers, we have to be tactful. Because if you are we see that Krishna is the, is, is the most, is the best of the, uh, the best of tactful personalities. Even in the case of Mohani Moti, he was, he was, she was very tactful. So Vamana also, he came with a high density tact to be able to resolve the problem. It was a deep rooted conflict, but he was able to come and resolve it without any killings. I mean, it's like Lord Chaitanya came. When Krishna appeared, he initiated or instigated the war. When every other thing like persuasion failed. But with Lord Chaitanya, his own persua persuasion and weapons were his devotees and the Krishna mantra. And therefore, when we look at the whole scenario, how the different incarnations of the Lord come, they fulfill one basic mission to reestablish re the principles of religion. And the second thing is to be able to you know, give a shy of relief to the devotees. So we, feel, we find in the case of Vamana that this objective was fulfilled. And it's interesting for us because we have all of these different strategies on how to even deal with conflicts. But most of the times we read the scriptures and we don't really think deep about the applications of these very concepts and stories in our own lives or in our own communities to deal with issues. So here are two basic fundamental things. How to be able to be, be more self-aware that we have to appreciate when people come into our community. This, I'm talking about newborn babies. Otherwise, the parents would think, oh, they don't, they don't want to give birth to children. <laughs> That's another way to also make devotees, you know. And when we are in the mood of support and charitably disposed to 
these people, especially when they're performing the ceremonies, bed the ceremony, bed the ceremonies of the children, we should, we should give the appropriate support so that they have a better sense of belonging. Especially those who are not even producing children, those who are not uh, grihastas, they should also lend a support to this type of social functions so that our grihasta community members, they have a better sense of belonging. Second thing is that we have to be thoughtful, just like the law, in resolving conflict. Hare Krishna. Any comments or questions? Yes, please. Yeah, the, you know, I remember one time we were, I remember one time we were on Parikram, we were on Parikram and then we entered one, uh, one, one temple, not an Eskon temple, and then they were having some pamphlets, so they were distributing some pamphlets, and I read, I picked one of the pamphlets, but I was so disgusted, why? They wrote on that pamphlet that the Bhagavatam uh, the historiographies are mythologies. In other words, they've been bought, the Indians, some of the Indians have been bought over by the Westerners, Western scholars, who give a tag to the Vedic culture as mythology. But these are real. Did Lord Ramachandra not appear on this, on this planet? Did Krishna not appear in Vrindavan? Why would they call it mythology? Or sometimes people don't understand it, what they're really talking, what they're really talking, the English language or the words they're using. They hear some Englishman say some word and they repeat it in a paper and they disappear in this paper to pilgrims. In other words, you're telling them, hey, damn you, this thing you're pursuing is fake. It never existed. It's a mythology. But no, these are real realities. Not ethologies, are real realities. So someone could also say, in the future, <laughs> 500 years from now, hearing about proper expansive and um, uh, empowered activities of establishing Krishna consciousness all over the world in a, ve in a, a very metacognitive time frame. And someone could say, this is mythology. It's not possible. So it's painful sometimes. But, yeah, like you mentioned, we have to re-emphasize and reinforce ourselves with the audacity of the Vedic literature, the Bhagavatam. The, these narrations in the Bhagavatam, they're real events. And so, we have to do that with firm faith. And, unfortunately, uh, I was reading in, uh, in the Kali Purana how in the Kali Yoga people will be so bewildered that even supposedly highly elevated people, spiritualists, they would doubt everything. <laughs> so we should be forewarned for that the effect of the age of Kali it could be so disastrous. It could be so devastating to even to the consciousness of human beings and even to our emotional intelligence. So it's a nice point to raise. 
we should coming together to be able to hear the Bhagavatam reinforces our commitment to the mission of Srila Prabhupada, reinforces our alignment to Lord Sri Krishna and Lord Chaitanya's mission. So thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, these uh, seemingly inconceivable activities that we, we have out there, the, the, the leaders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, they seem inconceivable. However, if one has faith, uh, there's unification. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Yes. I mentioned, in, I mean, primarily that there are three uh, modes of charity, mode of goodness, mode of passion, and mode of ignorance. So what is required, beneficial charity should be in the mode of goodness, uh, sattvic charity. And that is to the right person, like uh, a preacher, a sannyasi, a brahmana, who is spreading the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or who's spreading the mission of Lord Krishna. Because when you give your money or your resources to such a person, it's like you are a support part of the team. The person, the preacher is in the war, in the war front. But there are all these people who are the cooks, who are supporting with food. Otherwise, a soldier cannot be in the war front without food. They can't be in the war front without, you know, uh, basic infrastructures like uh, medication or whatever. So when we are performing charity, 
we should give charity to the right cause, have, give charity to a mission, to a preach, to an actively preaching mission, to an active preacher, then your charity will elevate you. If you give the charity to the wrong cause, then it's not, um, it's not really going to elevate you because uh, it will just, enable some, in some cases, it will enable you. And Prophet mentions that charity in the mode of passion is like building hospitals and all this stuff. So yeah, can you imagine? That's what Prophet said. So, to be elevated in terms of charity, we have to give what we want to give out to an active preacher or an active mission. A preaching, actively, active preaching mission. So you come here and you give your, your charity. You can give it directly to the temple. You can give directly to the deities. You put your money there. Huh? You know you're giving directly to Krishna. What's the problem? What's the problem about this? <laughs> All the temple president, according to Prabhu here. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice point to raise. And another thing, like Prabhupada mentioned, in terms of, like a case in India where people, sometimes you find people who have cows, they want to give cows on charity, but then they find a cow that is not very healthy or the cow, one of the legs is broken. And then that is also correlated. I remember when I was a brahmachari in New Jersey, we find people, when they're tired of using their cars, when they're tired of using their cars, then they come to give the car a charity to the temple. And then the temple tries to use it for preaching, and then it breaks down on the road because it's almost dead. So don't, don't, whatever you're giving to the temple, you're giving to Krishna. Krishna, should, you, should be, you should give the best to Krishna, not something you're tired of using. Then you come to give to Krishna. Krishna should take your remnants. Acha. Don't make Krishna. Don't be the guru to Krishna. Don't eat and give your remnants to Krishna. <laughs> this, this, this is charity, charity mode of goodness you're talking about, okay? Give the best to Krishna. If you're doubting, just put your money right there. Okay? And you can come and Ask the president what to do. They will show you what to do. There are so many, you know, things that require money here. You can sponsor something. Yeah. This is how to perform a charity. You give money to someone who is going to use, use your money to, anyway, to do something else. That's another problem. So it's a nice point to raise. Thank you, Prabhu. So, yes, some ladies. Can you, can you give her the microphone? The time is already off, but, you know, I don't want to be offensive. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for the wonderful class. Uh, why have you said that you should give charity to Krishna and do Baba Mishra? But also, on the second hand, there are many devotees who don't have Lakshmi. There is a lot of very passive children who are Krishna's partner. So, uh, you know, to give them all. Mm. Yeah, because in Islam, we, we, uh, we get money from a lot of places. But we see that we don't give to sin or anybody here and that if they smoke and all. But the past children, the poor, they don't need to pay me. They are doing too much service. So That's not the problem. It's not a problem. We are talking about charities in different modes. You are giving money for some venture, for someone who is not is uh, financially incapacitated. That's okay. As far as they don't use your money to, to perform some sinful activity. Then you get, you get some benefit. But if they use your money to perform sinful activities, then there's a problem. The other day, um, I went to, we went to the Sis Gus, uh, Gusami temples. We were coming back. Okay, I went with some brahmacharis. And we were coming back. And somebody just came, boom, to attack, to attack me. And, you know, when the other brahmacharis, they, they came up, a pol like a police officer with a gun came from nowhere and bolted that guy away. He was 
fully intoxicated. What does it mean to you? You can't even know what people do. Someone could be living in Vrindavan. He could even be born here. So there are different modes. You can give your money to anybody. You can do you can do the charity indiscriminately, no problem. You can do it in the mode of uh, uh, passion, no problem. But the recommendation is the mode of goodness. I'm, I'm not going to say something that proper does not recommend. We are trying to be proper, proper nougats. So I can't create my own sampradaya. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's nothing wrong in giving money to beggars. But if you're not sure, that's the problem. I gave an example. Someone was taking intoxicated, was drinking and smoking. <laughs> in other words, material world is a difficult place. Let us try to get out from this prison, this material world. All of these adjustments here and there is so difficult. Yeah, there are beggars all over for Naman. There's nothing wrong. You can give your resources to them. You can give your money to them. Okay? Am I just one more thing? Okay. Should I look for the family name or make up of certain percentage to be given to Krishna and then to your family members? So when what if your family members are into gambling and you know they they think it's just some time pass, they don't see that simple activity. Okay, so here is the case. The time is already up. I mean, I don't like I don't like to keep down people waiting once is when it's, once the time is up. But I can quickly respond to your to your inquiry. When your family members, you see, most family members are just sinful. Okay, so but then if you feel you're not going to be responsible to your family members because you're a devotee now, see. It's because of that fear. When I became, when I moved to the, let me let me let me finish. If they are chanting, if they are chanting and they are still gambling, they are eating, still eating onion and garlic. It doesn't mean that you cannot be responsible to them. When, and let's get this point very clear. Now, in a, in most cases, we tend to be too saintly. I did that. When I moved to the temple for 16 years, I never had contact with family members. When I met, when I even met my father with some devotees, when I when I met when I even met my dad with some devotees afterwards, after 16 years, he couldn't even recognize me. He was asking my friend about me. So my friend said, "Here is him." <laughs> so we tend to be too detached, and we don't want to be responsible. That basically can interfere with our relationship with our family members, with our friends. So if your parents, your family members, they are chanting, and just because they are not following all of the regular, regulatory principles, they are, I mean, it doesn't mean that they should just put them in a box. That's the time you should even show more love to them so that they don't think that your love is conditional. There are ways you can try to help family members, not just being too harsh on them. Suppose you are the only child, and the culture requires that you have to be responsible to your mom, responsible to your, uh, to your father. What would you do? If you are a renunciant, it's a different thing. But otherwise, we see the practical thing to do, and don't get too much on rating everyone on the same level. Krishna consciousness, it is a difficult process. Lord Brahma said, you come to this platform of doing everything when you must have attained Krita Punja Punja. Heaps and heaps of pious merit. It was, Rome was not built, your platform was not built overnight. It's not an overnight case. You're following the standard. It is not an overnight case. 
You've accumulated lots and lots of pious merit. So be a little bit sens sensitive to the needs of your family. That's what I can say. I'm, I'm not going to tell you, hey, bullshit them because they're not following all of the standards. They're chanting. Encourage them to chant. With time, they become purified. Encourage them to read Prabhupada's book. With time, they will want to follow everything by themselves. Instead of just making the rule. Because you're not doing this, I had a friend in D.C. One day she called me. She's a, ba she's a retired banker. One day she called me. Her parents also, not, they're not, she said they were not involved in devotional service. But then she called me one day and said, Maharaj, I think these people, I should just dump them. I said, dump who? He said, his, her parents, her family. I said, so, because you have been a devotee, you think it's so easy for everybody? So we have to be a little bit more compassionate, okay? Don't be too harsh. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Shri Bhagavatam Ki